Hello everyone, I'm Madhusudan Raj, your host, and I'm back with my weekly economic report today, 27th August 2012. And I'm going to begin with last week's news where the Indian government proposed free supply of drugs for poor people. The government is mulling in their 12th final twelfth five year plan that they are going to supply the essential uh, drugs for free to these poor people. Now, those viewers who have taken uh, Economics 101 class and those who understand a little bit uh, of economics, uh, they know that there is no free lunch out there in the market. So what government is saying as uh, free supply of drugs is not actually going to be free for the society as a whole. Somebody will have to pay for these free drugs and that somebody is none other than the poor course taxpayers. So maybe these uh, poor people are not going to pay directly out of their pocket uh, the cost of this medicine, but the taxpayers, the hardworking productive segment of Indian society is going to pay for all these drugs ultimately. And not only that, these poor people are also going to pay for these drugs in the form of time which they are going to waste uh, by standing in long queues which will be uh, uh, which will come into existence now because the price of these drugs is zero. If you understand the law of demand and supply then it is very clear that when the price of some product is zero the demand will uh, suit upwards it will become almost infinite everybody will line up to buy this drug for free and the supply will not be forthcoming because at zero price no producer will be ready to supply these drugs so on one side the demand is shooting infinitely upwards and the supply is you know becoming constrained what is going to happen is people will have to stand in a long queues to get this tablet so you will see long lines outside the medical stores so only those people who will reach there first they will they will only you know get these drugs other people who will reach there late they'll have to wait in very long long lines and as i said there is no free lunch out there so the price which these people are going to pay is in terms of the time which they are going to waste by standing in the queue so the opportunity cost of uh, these drugs you know how they are going to pay for these drugs is through their time so for example if these people are uh, working for one hour in the labor market and earning let's say 100 rupees hourly wages then if they will have to stand in the queue for two hours these people are going to lose the hourly wages of 200 rupees that's the foregone option that's the opportunity cost of having this free drug so there there are no free you know drugs out there there is no free lunch people will pay not not maybe out of their pocket but they will pay uh, by wasting their time and standing in long queues and ultimately taxpayers will also also foot the bill of this free drug supply Government is doing all this thing because they just want to win votes. These are politicians and politicians are only hungry for political power. So they will do everything and anything to win votes. So by giving things for free, by just, you know, throwing these freebies to, to dependent population, slave citizens, they are just going to win votes for themselves and, you know, get re-elected into the into the elections and then they can rule over these poor people so it is in their interest to give these things for free now uh, make sure that you don't understand and uh, you don't misunderstand me you know i i also want to help these poor people and i don't wish that somebody goes without drugs somebody goes without medical attention when they are really in need uh, but the the only thing uh, which is different is i don't want to use the government apparatus because as I said, government apparatus is immoral and it is also counterproductive. It is inefficient. Uh, we are going to use market system to uh, give these essential drugs to these poor people. In the free market capitalist system, uh, the prices of these drugs will not be very high. Right now, the, these drugs are very costly because first thing is that government has monopoly 
or the health system you know they have very you know strong regulations etc et although in india the health system is fairly uh, free right now i'm not saying fairly free in the sense of free market but the regulation with the ways compared to other foreign countries uh, are less so that's why it is a little bit less costly but in any case it's very costly because the supply is constrained and on the other side the drug industries the big pharma they have they have created monopoly by using this intellectual property right patent laws so they have patents of all, all these drugs and because of that they are the sole supplier they are the sole manufacturers of these particular drugs and that keeps the supply lower keep the prices higher and that's how it deprives all these poor people of this essential supply of this dro uh, uh, supply of these essential drugs in a free market capitalist system there will be no ip laws because you know nobody can own ideas ideas are non scarce you know intangible goods you know intangible things so nobody can own ideas ideas can only be, uh, uh, things can only be owned if it is scarce and if it is physical so this whole idea, a whole uh, notion of somebody can own idea is absolutely ludicrous. So in that world, in that kind of free market to capitalist system, no, no drug companies will have patents. Everybody is free to manufacture these drugs and companies will be benefiting. They are making, they are going to make profit by serving their consumers. So when so many companies will be out there in the market, manufacturing these drugs what's going to happen again is the supply of these drugs will increase and that will reduce the prices on the other side because government will not be there so there will be no inflation money supply will be stable there will be sound monetary system so that will reduce the prices in the long term the secular trend of prices will be downwards and that's how these poor people are going to uh, in a position going to be in the position to afford these medicines in the free market free market capitalist system as I said you know I'm not against poor people in fact I'm very much I'm I very much wish that everybody becomes become become rich because we don't want to love poverty we want to love riches I'm sure you, you agree with me on, on that point so how you're going to make these people um, rich not by increasing their nominal income but by increasing their real income so maybe their nominal income will remain stable but their real income will go up because the prices of economic goods are you know, slowly declining over a long period of time so that will increase their standard of living that's going to make them richer and that's how they're going to afford all these essential drug supplies so the the governmental way of helping poor people is not going to help actually poor people it is going to harm them in the long run it's going to make them dependent on government and ultimately government is as usual going to ditch them they're going to use them just for their vote you know purposes and nothing else the real way of helping these people is to make them richer right allowing uh, free market capitalist system to work all right uh, on the the other news is that state-owned uh, power utility companies are now, you know, government is thinking that they are going to restructure 35 billion US dollar debt of these power utilities and by doing that, uh, they are thinking, thinking that they are going to remove the shortages of the power supply. You know that, you know, a couple of weeks back, or maybe months back, there was a huge blackout in India. But this this problem uh, this this policy is not going to work what they want to do is that they want to just uh, shift this 35 billion dollar debt of the state owned utilities on regional government's book so ultimately they are kicking the can down the road that's what they are doing they are not eliminating this debt they are not removing and dismantling these public utilities and not allowing the private markets to produce and distribute electricity they are, they are they're just happy with the status quo they don't want to change the status quo what what is what is going to happen in future because of this is that the states will be you know having this you know bad toxic debt on their books now so in future all these states will default on their debts ultimately somebody will have to pay this bill somebody will have to you know pay back this debt and I know that in the end, taxpayers are going to be on hook because the states, when they will go bankrupt, when they will default, they'll print endless money to pay their debt. They'll, they'll, you know, devalue the currency.
but in any case this is never going to solve the problem of shortages of power supply it is only going to be solved when you allow free market capitalist system again to work you know power companies private power companies they will be catering to their consumers and they will do anything and everything to you know supply electricity you know best quality electricity at the cheapest possible price right some news from the banking sector sbi chief pratip chaudhary is for phasing out of uh, crr the credit reserve ratio he said this thing uh, when he was uh, attending fikki banking conclave yeah mr pratip chaudhary is very much interested in phasing out the crr because he thinks that it 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 uh, binds the hands of bankers yes it it binds the hand of bankers so and that is good you know if you remove the crr credit reserve ratio the amount of you know reserve they have to keep with the rbi the central bank then this bank the commercial banks are completely free to inflate endlessly so basically what pratip chaudhary is saying that he's he's for inflation and that's what commercial banks are all about they work on the basis of fractional reserve standard they can just inflate endlessly when they remove the crr so mr pradeep chaudhary is interested in inflation but i said you know we don't want to phase out crr in fact we want to bring in the 100% reserve gold standard you know if we want to divide the loan banking and deposit banking and institute 100% reserve gold standard make it fraudulent illegal for this bank to lend depositors money I know it's very difficult, but in future this system is going to come. So you stay ready for that. Uh, also, LNT, LNT, uh, Larson and Tubro's chief uh, uh, CEO Nayak, he's for strong laws against dumping. He has asked government to frame strong anti-dumping laws to protect India's manufacturing sector from cheap import from China. So, so. ultimately this is this means that uh, lnt ceo nayak is for higher prices of this manufacturing product for the indian consumers he is for higher unemployment for indian youth and he is for poverty and less progress in indian society if he is capable enough then he should be competing with this chinese companies who are providing cheap products to indian consumers so he is basically asking for protection protection from foreign competition so he is very inept his company is not in a position to compete so that's why he is using government and screwing the consumers and other other sectors of indian economy if you will not allow this foreign cheap goods to come into india then what what will happen is prices of all these products will go up because these people are not going to they are not already producing uh, much and the supply from outside will also stop that's going to increase the price so consumer will have to pay more prices so that that's why uh, their income is you know basically uh, going into this direction now they have to pay more price so less is uh, you know you know uh, less is remaining to spend on other sector of the economy so the other sectors will get depressed unemployment will result so only his industry is going to benefit out of this protectionist measure all other entities in the indian society are going to lose because of this indian consumers other other industries everybody is going to lose only lnt and his you know his bodies are going to win so lnt chief nike is not a businessman he is basically a criminal he is a corporatist fascist criminal he is thinking of screwing the indian consumers instead of competing with this chinese companies and instead of trying to provide best quality services at the cheapest possible price to indian consumer he is asking the government the mafia gang the criminal gang to stop this competition so you should be ashamed of yourself mr nike and just resign if you cannot compete against these foreign companies go back home and do some kind of productive work last but not the least investment plunged by 50% in fiscal year, year 2012 rbi report said Order book for capital goods producing firms have declined. Large infrastructure project investment are declining, and this is very typical business cycle. You know, if you understand Austrian business cycle theory, then you will never get surprised by this kind of news. 
because as I said, the male investment has taken place into a heavy capital goods industry, and that male investment should get, you know, is going to get liquidated in this recession time, which is a correctionary phase and very much needed. Recessions are not bad. Actually, they are very good. What is what was bad was the prior artificial boom, which was created by the RBI's loose monetary policy of low interest rates. So this is going to happen, and you know it should be allowed to happen instead of pumping more money into the sector and you know uh, screwing the productive structure of economy more. But in any case, as I said, government is not going to stop at doing all this thing. They will keep on spending and RBI will keep on printing money. So we will have to prepare for higher, you know, higher inflation in future. Prices will go up because they're going to print a lot of money. They're going to create money out of thin air. So one of the effects of that will be higher prices. Other effect is, you know, money, you know, wealth transfer, you know, from poor people to rich people. And then this business cycle is also going to continue. The boom is going to continue and ultimately it is going to pop in future and when it will bust, People will have to endure a lot of pain for that. But they don't care for that. They just worry about their own own lives and they don't worry about our lives. So as I said, future is going to be very tough. All right. So thank you very much for watching me this week and I'll be back with more news next week. Goodbye.